It's 72 in here? Ugh. Oh. I keep my. it at like 75 when you're not here. That's because you're crazy. <sighs> If you were not here, it would be maximum 68. If, if you're here, I don't need it to be as hot. Ooh, are you saying I keep you warm? You keep me. Hey, welcome to another episode of The Men. Fiona Show, thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy that you are here. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe and share with all of your friends. Um, that helps us know what's going on and helps us reach more people. I'm trying to reach all the peoples. Um, we are going to kick it right off because we're back. We were off last week. We're back now. We are. Um, we are going to kick off a, a brand new episode uh, coming at you today talking about guardrails. Mm. Um are you going to start this one? Sure. Okay. Um, in our journeys, I don't, journeys. Even, I don't even remember where we were. We were somewhere driving and there were no guardrails. Yeah. On the and road. it was, it was a, um, sharp turn, deep drop. And, um, I just thought to myself, I was like, we really should have guardrails here. Not because I'm expecting to get into an accident or think anything, but it just looked like a good place for a guardrail. And there was it. I'd really love to know where we were. I can't, I can't remember. remember at all. But that does not matter. No. We, we've all driven those roads we've where, seen it. yes, um, even just here in North America, where there should be guardrails. And, you know, what happens is sometimes those guardrails don't come up until after there's an accident instead right. of the accident being prevent or the tragic accident being prevented. Then the guardrails go up after a tragedy has occurred. Mm -hmm. And we see that time and time again. And it just got me thinking, you know, um, I would have loved to see a guardrail there, not expecting to get into an accident, not expecting anything bad to happen. Um, and, you know. No, but you can enjoy that drive or that, that trip or that portion a whole lot better if there's a guardrail there. You feel <laughs> a touch safer. Tell me I'm wrong. But you do, you feel a touch safer. And it just kind of got me thinking. I'm like, you know, so many times I've listened to um, people um, and, you know, they're they're along the lines of, well, pastor expects a lot or... Right. Or, he's very demanding. He's very demanding or... He's pushing this. He's asking a lot from us or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was taking that drive and was like, man, I really wish there was a guardrail there, there I kind of kind of went along the path of, um, you know, in our life, the Bible is there to put guardrails there for us. Our pastor is there to put guardrails on our life for us to kind of keep right. us safe. And how often there are times that those, that people get upset when the Bible, <clears throat> we didn't write it, inspired word of God, just throwing it out there. But when the Bible or pastor who's preaching the Bible, the inspired right. word of God, they get upset at some of these protections that are being placed shared. and yeah. shared. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very controlling. Right. 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 Which is, again, if, if you're going to connect the two concepts, right? How often are you driving down the road and you go, man, that MTO, that Department of Transportation, that DOT, <laughs> man, they are just, they are so controlling. Right. They will not let me drive off the side of the cliff. We have to drive on the correct side of the road. Please, please do that. <laughs> the, the, yes, I've this seen is it very, often. Uh, very important. <clears throat> but you know, I remember we were in, and this may have been where it was, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but we were coming through Tennessee. We're that was a back. while ago. So it this was, was a yeah, whole different road. Right, right. But right. yes. But we were we were driving through. We had never done the um the great uh, the Smoky, Smoky Mountain. National Park, whatever it is. Um and we had never done that drive through the, the Smoky middle Mountains, of it. Yeah. Well no, I'd done the, the Smoky Mountains on seventy five, but I'd never oh, done right. the drive through the mountains to um uh the dome top thing. And you're driving up those that that mountain and it doesn't, most of the time, it's not 
it's not scary. There's no cliffs. There's no real drop-offs. No. You're just driving through the woods. It's beautiful. And all of a sudden you get to the, you know, fairly high up there. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple spots where you're on the side of the mountain. Yep. Nobody who's driving that road stops and petitions and gets out and goes, oh my gosh, Tennessee, <laughs> how dare you have a guardrail here? Take down the guardrails. I would love to be able to, if I want to, drive my car on the side of the road past the guardrail to see how close I can get. Right? Nobody ever says that. But when it comes to your walk, when pastor is laying something out or when you're reading something, you're going to go, oh, well, that that section of the Bible doesn't apply to me. That guardrail doesn't or apply. that's just being overbearing. Yeah, or yeah, a little oh, extra... Cr- I mean... That's Old Testament. That's Old oh, Testament. Right. <laughs> that's but New yes, Testament. Right, yeah. Or passed there are, away with the apostles. There are yeah. so many things that are... In, in the Bible and, and that hopefully are being taught to you by your, your pastor, by your leaders that are literally just guardrails for your life, trying to help keep you on the straight and yes. narrow, which is the whole purpose of a guardrail. Yes. Right? To keep you safe. Those safety things are put in place to just keep you safe. They don't impede what you're doing. Right. right? They're not really there to mess you up. They're not blockading they're just, you. They're, they're just not, to help protect you. Yes. You know, I, <clears throat> I've, I've been a skier since I was nine. Right. right. So I, I've now skied for 31 years. Right. Yes, you have. Stop it. Um, you can now do the math. Um, and I've skied, you know, I've skied in California. I've skied in Vermont. I've skied in New York. I've skied in, obviously, in Ontario. I've skied in Michigan. Right. I've skied in a bunch of different places. Right. Every time I go on a chairlift, you do this thing where you reach back and, and you pull down the safety bar. And it's it's like a little metal lap bar if you're on just a traditional yeah. chairlift yeah. that goes across your waist. It's not a buckle. It's not a seat belt. It's nothing intrusive. It's something to, like put your, your arms on and you can kind of, you know, chill out and rest a little bit. I've never been annoyed that they make me put the safety bar down. I've also never been annoyed that it's there. And if you're on some of the newer chairlifts, right. That safety bar that comes down also has footrests. Mm. So you can put your skis on it. It's mm. wonderful. It's wonderful. Or you're bored if you're one of those people. Um, but like they've never bothered me. <laughs> and you appreciate, I mean, at yeah. least I do, yeah. I appreciate the fact that they're taking my safety into consideration. Yeah, and w- growing up in, in skiing before we had kids, the safety bar was kind of like, it was great, didn't bother me, didn't care one way or the other, right. really. But once we had kids, man, I love that safety yeah. bar. <laughs> it's just true. It helps keep them contained yep. on the chairlift. It yep. is great. This winter... We went to visit some friends and we went up to Michigan Mm -hmm. and we skied with them up in Michigan at a resort I'd not been to. Right. And we get there. (coughs) There were no safety bars. And there wasn't a safety bar in sight. There was nothing. You're just sitting on the chair going up. And again, it's not that high. No. And I'm not really afraid of heights. And we all survived. We 100%. But it's one of those things where all of a sudden I'm like, where is the safety bar? Yeah. It, Why is it there not a safety unco- bar? It was uncomfortable. And we're going up the chair and it. I'm doing this. <laughs> holding. And, well, actually, I wasn't holding the chair. I was holding the chair and a child. And also, we are leaning as far back as we, we're oh, yeah. used to, like, hanging over and hanging on the oh, safety Oh, my gosh. Bar. We're, like, as far back. Don't breathe. Don't turn around. You just hold your place. Yeah, just sit. Just and our sit. friends <laughs> who have, this is this, they're just learning to ski. This is their first season, really. Um, they've never skied anywhere other than this resort, mm-hmm. which doesn't have safety bars. So they don't know that and, safety and bars are a big thing. And they've been skiing there a few times, like yeah. m- multiple times already that it was and comfortable again, for them. It's one of those things where <coughs> they didn't have that quote unquote guardrail, that safety rail. Mm-hmm. So it didn't affect them. It didn't bother them. It didn't throw them off. Right. But we have, you know, cause I, I taught you to ski. I taught the, our three kids how to ski. Right. We've never skied anywhere without a, without safety, a bar. safety bar. So even my kids were, they weren't freaked out, but it, it was different. It, it, it 
caused a little bit of pause. It did. It right? caused a little, like they, yeah, they and got again, used to it. But it's perfectly safe. It's fine. This is, you know, the safety bar is not a new invention, but it hasn't been around forever. Right. 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 Um, but it's one of those things where. But here's the other thing. I'm going to just throw this out. Go ahead. <laughs> if our friends ever go skiing somewhere else. They're not going to get mad at the other ski hill no. because there's a safety bar there. Yeah. They might appreciate it even, mm -hmm. right? So, Especially when they learn that you can lean over it. Yes. And there's a comfort to it. There's yeah. a security exactly. to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so often when it comes to, you know, instructions in the Bible right, or words that our preacher, mm -hmm. our, pre our pastor preaches... Those guidelines or guardrails are not there to impede us. No. They're to protect us. They're to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. They're to honestly create boundaries almost. Right. From unsafe whatever. Environments. Environments. Yeah. Yes. Right? None of it is <sighs> is controlling or... Um, well, again, the... the I, I and I love the example of the the ski lift, right? Yes. Because <clears throat> I've again I've been skiing a long time. I can count on probably one hand the number of times I've seen someone fall from a chairlift. Right. Right. And not like when they just miss it sitting down and have um, a hard time. Yeah. Or if they fall getting off it. Right. Right. Or right, they're right. shimmying too much as it's coming to the yep. top and they they miss and you know fall a couple feet. But. I have seen people fall off a chairlift from, you know, 20, 30 feet in the air because they're, they're messing around. Right. They're not behaving appropriately. But <clears throat> that safety bar doesn't impact your life in any way. Nope. It's not trying to control you. It's not trying to dictate what you do. It's not trying to say, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that on the chairlift. It's literally there to protect you yes. from self-harm. Yes. Because the only way you're going to fall off that chairlift is if you're screwing around. If you are b being unsafe. Yeah. If you are messing around, if you are, you know, doing something silly. Right. That's how you're going to have an issue because that chair is, that chair is pitched backwards. Mm -hmm. Right. It's designed to keep you from falling off the chair. Yes. And from sitting back. So that, that bar is, is literally there to protect you from yourself. Yes. Right? Yes. And that is <coughs> exactly what the word is trying to yep. do. It's trying to protect you from yourself. And I think Not we, from external no. factors or anything else, but how you deal with your life and those external factors. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. I don't understand why... So many people have such a hard time with the very, like, honest, honestly, quite lenient guardrails that the Bible puts on our lives. Right. Or offers to our lives. O to offers, us. yes. Yeah, offers to yes. us. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not a crazy thing. Like, we're, we're talking some real basics here, but <coughs> so many people get so caught up about that. Right. Right. It, it's like the, it's like the seatbelt. Right. Right. When that first came in, my, Ooh. my grandfather used to tell me stories all the time about when they first started putting, um, seatbelts in cars mm -hmm. and how he didn't want to wear one and nobody wanted to wear one. Well, yeah, and it that was, was my dad. They, yeah. they made, and they, when they made it a law. Oh yeah. My. Yeah. Just wouldn't do it. They just wouldn't do it. Oh yeah. There was a bunch of people of that era. So you remember the, I don't know, the Toyotas? He got the Toyota. My oh, mom made him get the Toyota that, that hooked to the side. So yes. when the door closed, the seatbelt came <laughs> automatic. up. The automatic, automatic seatbelt. Seat you still had to do the lap. He wouldn't do it. But no, my mom made him get that Toyota that when the door closed, the seatbelt went up to keep him safe. And he, and he did that. I always thought that was the coolest thing. Oh, yeah. Until I actually got in one and went, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, well, <laughs> it got my dad wearing a seatbelt for his but own again, safety and protection. Nowadays. Yes. Right? Nobody whines about a seatbelt. No. 
And if they do, they are a special kind of <laughs> something. You can fill in the blank yourself. If you have a problem with it, leave comments. We'll reach out. No, we won't. No, we won't. We don't read the comments. Oh. Um, <coughs> yeah. And for you people that leave them, exactly. We don't read them. Do you get comments? Every now and again. Oh. Hmm. Um, it shows me how much I... Exactly. Anywho, continue. <laughs> that seatbelt not is not... It is not controlling your life. It, it it's literally in Put the in event place. of something really bad happening. Protect it's you. It's going to help protect you. Mm-hmm. Right. You still have all as, your movement. as long as you yep. can do this. Click. You can tell I always drive. Click <laughs> unless you're in the UK and then I'm a passenger. Um, that's all you got to do. You got to do that one simple little act. Right. And then <laughs> you're gonna get the benefit of. All of those safety features in the car. Yes. Right? Because it's not anymore. It's not just the seatbelt. It's all the airbags. Yes. It's the curtains. It's whatever else is in there. Right. Right? But that that curtain airbag, <coughs> excuse me, is not going to help you if you don't click it. Yep. Right? You got to click it or you're going to get a ticket. <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry. As soon as I brought up mm, the, yeah. It's it was, all good. It was there. Okay. But as long as you do that little simple yeah. act, right, just like the chairlift, you, uh, it's not going to pull itself down. The lifties will yell at you if you don't. Yeah. But all you got to do is reach up and grab it and pull it down. Yeah. And you've, you've solved. It's a simple act. The majority of issues that could ever come up when yeah. you're on that chairlift. Yeah. So in our lives, all we have to do is do the simple act of obeying the couple of, again, pretty simple, pretty minor things in the Bible that guide our life. Yes. Right? If you follow those simple steps, again, the act of just pulling that seatbelt in right. and clicking it in, you're going to be protected from the majority of issues in the world. Now, I'm going to just say, I'm going to say this. Go the, ahead. The part about all of that with the ski mm -hmm. lift and with the seatbelt and everything, it's there for you, yeah. but you have to do the action exactly. both for the protection. You know, when we were talking about this, the one thing that came up was, you know, I was thinking back to, you know, Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And this goes back, so so this is an issue as far as following or implementing these safety principles in your yep. life. Yep. Because even, you know, go back to the Garden of Eden and they had one guardrail. Right. One guardrail. Yeah, don't Do, eat fruit of that tree. That was it. That one tree. You have everything else. You have dominion over everything. You have direct fellowship with God himself. Mm -hmm. You have heaven on earth, yep. literally. There was one guardrail. Yeah. Don't eat the fruit of that tree. And they drove right through it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I say that not, I say that for the sheer fact of it, this is something that we've got to be aware of and we need to decide and mm -hmm. we do need to act on it because na our nature Outside of it, because God gave us our own will, right? We have, you know... What's our rebellious nature, right? Yes, and what? it's in us from that fall. Mm -hmm. Yep. That fall, but he gave us a will so that we can... We're not puppets on a string. You right. know, we're not marionettes. He's not controlling us. We control ourselves. And he's saying, here's my manual. Yeah. I've got it all laid out for you. I've got all yeah. the safety checks there. I've got all the guardrails there. I've got everything for you, but here's here's what you need and I'm giving mm -hmm. it to you, but you now have to act on it. Mm -hmm. We have to pull that safety bar down. We have to clip that in. And from the very beginning of time, even with Adam and Eve, God said, okay, here's everything. Yep. I just have one rule. One rule. One rule, one guardrail. And from back then... They couldn't abide by it. As you said, yep. they drove right through it. So you can think and be like, oh, well, I mean, you know, it's pretty easy. I've got I've got this down. But our nature, our rebellious nature, yep. it does. It fights us. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like when my dad, when it first, that whole seatbelt thing went into place. Like, nope. I am not wearing a seatbelt. Government overreach. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it will save your life. Nope. nope. Not for me, right? Like, no, I can hold that steering wheel better than that seatbelt can hold me. Right? Yeah. You know, and that's just ingrained in us. But so we need to make an effort mm -hmm. to take the word and to apply it into our lives. We need to take what our pastor preaches yep. because what our pastor is preaching, hopefully, 
I know our pastor, yep. right? Um, and I know a lot of great pastors. I know what our pastor is preaching is from the word of God and what he's teaching us and mm-hmm. sharing with us is for our own good and it is for our own protection. Right. The Bible yeah. is the inspired word of God and it is there so that we can have life and life more abundantly. And he's not all the, uh, you know, people call them rules or people, whatever you want to call them. No. So controlling. They're not, you know, our kids, Mm -hmm. right? Very simple. He's our heavenly father and he wants the best for us. As parents, we want the best for our children. Right. So continually we put, we put safety measures in place in their life. We put guardrails up because we know that we don't want them to be unsafe. Even today we're dealing with mulch. Yeah. And we're dealing with the yard and we're dealing with all stuff. So we've got the trailer out and I want, when my kids are shoveling, I don't need them shoveling towards another Each kid's other. face. Yeah, that's right. Bad. You know, there are, we guide them, we direct them, we teach them and we work with them to ensure that they are safe. Mm-hmm. We are not being controlling. We are being loving. And I think that's one thing that often gets overlooked. Yeah. The, what the Bible is telling us what our pastor is preaching in our case for sure Mm -hmm. are those safety guardrails, not because he wants to control us, but because wants us protected. We are God's children and he wants us safe and protected. Yeah. But you want to know what, just like I tell my kids not to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not going to do it. I wish that was the case. And sometimes they wind up getting hurt. And I'm like, well, I've told you this three times. Yeah, so maybe don't do so it. So maybe don't do it. <laughs> so I warned them. I put that guardrail up. Yeah. And and they gracefully, blissfully ignored it. And, you know, and it's going to happen, but it's the same thing in our life. Well, and that's the thing is it, it's, that's something that you see all the time in, in church too, right? Yes. Is, <coughs> and don't get overly offended with this or do. But the majority of Christians that complain about it being controlling or, or whine about the guardrails or, or, you know, complain about it, mm-hmm. they're the younger, immature Christians. Right. The people <clears throat> that I see at the ski hill that don't want to put the safety bar down right. are always the teenagers. Yep. They're the ones who are too cool to put the safety bar down. Right. They're also the ones who fall off the chairlift before it reaches the top because they're goofing around. Right. Right? They're the ones who lose skis on the chairlift because they're goofing around. Right. It's not typically the adults because they've matured. Right. The a very easy way to spot a baby Christian is one who's really immature about these things. They're being rebellious. They're trying to see how far across the line they can go right. before they get smacked down. And well, they're gonna stretch those rules. They're gonna try and, you know. See how much they can get away with, how much they can rely on grace. Yes. Right? Oh, well, I can do this because, you know, by grace. I'm like, well, no, not exactly. We were freed from sin, not freed to sin. Exactly. Just, you know. um, And again, an immature Christian is somebody who would still be a, just going to use quotations, a Christian for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. Oh, yeah. You know, (laughs) it's the maturity level. Some people just you know, don't grow up. I mean, and we see that in all aspects. In all aspects. <laughs> yep. Um, and we'll y- leave that there. Well, yeah, we'll leave that there. But, you know, just take this into consideration that, you know, when I recognized that that guard rail wasn't there, the first thing that came to my mind mm-hmm. that day was, man, you know, I am grateful to God that he does have guardrails in my life. I would like to say that I abide by them all the time, but there's definitely times that I screw up or I miss the guardrail right. or I get frustrated that there's a guardrail there mm-hmm. or I don't know how to handle it, right? Because um, this is just what we do and this is, you know, we're human, let's be honest. But we need to recognize and be grateful that those boundaries, so to speak, if you will, um, those safety features of the Bible are there for our best intentions. Yeah. We are God's children mm-hmm. and all he wants to do is protect us because he loves us more than we can ever imagine. Right. And we need to, I think, almost look at it a little bit differently so that we can appreciate 
the guardrails yeah. instead of fight them. Like, Very much so. Right? So, 100%. Um, I appreciate DOT or MTO, depending you? where you are, and the guardrails that they put up on the road. I do too. I s- totally appreciate chairlift guard, chairlift. Oh, Safety yes. <laughs> and, you know, the funny thing is, is I have a greater, greater appreciation for it now. Right. After riding on ones that didn't have it. Yeah. Mm. Not a huge fan of that. No. So. I really like the ones that have footrests. I do, too. I can't wait to do the ones that's that have really, the domes. That's not really a safety thing, though. Ah, safety for my knees. And it keeps your skis on. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Extra safety. I'm just excited. Why not take it? Ski season is only we just got seven out of ski months season. away. It's coming. Okay. Winter Count, counts coming. on. Winter's coming. Thank you so much for joining us. We are super uh, happy that you were here, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. As always, uh, as we're closing, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. <laughs> you can find that information below. Um, and we'll see you next week yeah. for another episode where we might not talk about skiing. Maybe. Have a great week. We'll see. See ya. Bye. Bye.